The man dubbed the Manoa Rapist is getting some signals that he could be let out of prison for the first time in more than 30 years. The case of John Frudenberg is one we've been following for years. He's serving life in prison with the possibility of parole for multiple rapes and assaults in the 1980s. And every year since he served his minimum sentence, he's been denied parole. But today, the parole board showed a willingness to at least consider a plan to let him out of prison, which will be reviewed in six months. Gina Mangieri is always investigating and follows up tonight. Gina? Joe, what's different today is that for the first time, the majority of the board appears to be leaning toward considering an in-state direct-to-parole path for Freudenberg, saying they don't think the Department of Public Safety is earnest about putting him on the work furlough that the board has recommended for decades. 35 years ago this month, John Freudenberg entered Halava Prison, a young man who'd committed a violent sexual crime spree. Now 57, he's on his 20th year, trying to convince the parole board he no longer poses a threat. But I know that that is not uh, who I am now. Um, that's the person I was back then, 35 years ago. His attorney has argued that the board and the Department of Public Safety have turned a life with the possibility of parole sentence into a de facto life without parole because DPS has yet to grant the work furlough that the board has recommended as a required step before parole. His rights, what about the rights of the 16 women he terrorized trauma and traumatized in Manoa during the early 1980s? That's a deputy prosecutor reading a letter from a victim. What occurred many years ago, um, time has not healed all those wounds, and she still has suffered um, greatly as a result. I recognize that I, I caused, uh, as I said, tremendous suffering, and I deserve uh, tremendous punishment in return. And I've paid my debt as, debt as far as prison time, but I know that also when I go out, I'll still be paying my debt for the rest of my life. He was close to getting out to head to Texas, approved in concept by Hawaii's board, but okayed and rescinded twice by Texas authorities. If this board is open to releasing Mr. Freudenberg to Texas, similarly, we should be open to releasing him here. And for the first time, the board opened the door to weigh that possibility if DPS continues to stall on a work furlough spot. We have recommended work for over 20 years, 20 years. But the Department of Public Safety has made it a point to make sure that Mr. Freudenberg does not get to work for him. And logic would tell me that, that perhaps we should be talking about parole for, for Mr. Freudenberg. I, I, I. One of Freudenberg's victims told Always Investigating, if he goes straight to parole, it is a big responsibility to have a successful outcome. As a victim, I feel that the safety of our community is of utmost importance. The parole board would have to have complete trust in John Freudenberg. Freudenberg's attorney offered up an outline of intensive parole that would include a group home, electronic monitoring, 24-7 calling, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew, weekly parole office visits, and random drug tests. Whatever it takes, the most intensive program possible to demonstrate that he can be in compliance. The board heatedly debated what to do and agreed to come back in six months to consider a final version of the parole plan. Then it'll sharpen the issue to see whether it's going to be parole with as many conditions or whether it, hopefully public safety will consider work furlough, which is ob the obvious way they should think. For the life of me, I don't know why they're not going down that road. The Department of Public Safety said they're still working on a furlough program specific to John Freudenberg, but would not give Always Investigating a specific timeline. And added, people can be assured that public safety is our number one priority. What assurance can you give to the public and to the victims that this special plan you've been tasked to come up with will be anywhere near as secure as the Department of Public Safety's work furlough equivalent? More people run from work furlough than from parole. By the time someone's granted parole, the vast majority of parolees realize how much they have to lose. So far, electronic monitoring has only been used by the state on the neighbor island. Freudenberg's attorney said the inmate's family is willing to pay, if necessary, for a GPS device for use on Oahu. We'll be at the next parole board hearing in six months, and we'll report back with an update.
Gina Mangieri, KHON2 News.